you see yeah what the point i'm making is that the uh, for her and for those who work with her it's a man it's a big disgrace to her as a person it's a big disgrace to her family it's a big disgrace to what she represents we lack selfless leaders we lack leaders that will put the country first and not their selfish interest even anek themselves appears not to have confidence in themselves bringing out the result they use in declaring to know the winner of the election so that it could be interrogated erofai was boosted on tape that has already gone viral that his fellow countrymen in kaduna who are christians will never be governor will never be deputy governor will never be secretary to the state government will never be uh, the country has been thrown into chaos when i say chaos i mean political chaos there is um a sort of confusion um at the political periphery because um news reaching us right now says president um asiwaju bola ahmed tinubu has just suspended abdul rashid bawa the chairman of the economic financial crimes commission that is um the updates first on the block my name is angelo welcome to nation voice tower about um, the suspension of abdul rashid bawa who has over time been the alleged savior of the efcc and the um the uh, self-acclaimed or uh, purported younger uh, and um so vibrant efcc chairman that has kept all politicians on their toe especially the most recent one between him and um former governor of zamfara state uh we're talking about um Bello matawale that particular issue has come on board and um well we have no details because the details about the suspension of the efcc chairman are still sketchy details are more when we get those particular information would we'll always bring it to our lovely viewers yes first of all i have something quite different in response to what the former governor of kaduna state nasil el rufai has said or to have said in a viral video while speaking in hausa to some islamic clerics on the eve of his last day in office an author and political analyst and a member of the labor party presidential campaign council one paul um, Wadima has responded. He questioned the former governor's statements and, however, placed an unanswered question on whether Nigeria is actually practicing democracy. He further opined that if that was democracy, then it shouldn't be practiced in Nigeria. He spoke also about the death of democracy as linked to the election results that had um, President Bola at, at Siwaju Ahmed Tinubu emerge as the president elect as announced by INEC on the first day of March 2023. This particular day of March has been the issue what or issue on board at the presidential elections petitions tribunal and that has made um, Paul Owadima question the um, issue whether or not if we are practicing democracy in this lovely country of ours. Without wasting much of your time, um, the interview was so lengthy so in order to keep our most lovely viewers so great to nation voice tower we brought you this particular cut from this long um, or this lengthy interview because uh, we felt that um it's of utmost importance to share this particular update with our most lovely preferred and most amiable viewers please stay tuned as you watch paul wadima talk and castigate the tinubus regime we lack selfless leaders we lack leaders that will put the country first and not their selfish interest. We lack leaders that will put the constitution first and not their selfish and parochial interest. I'll give you a typical example of this, that's this scenario. Remember, during the election, there was unmitigated violence throughout Lagos State, both in the presidential election and it got worse in the governorship election. As Wadibola Medinubu, the leader of APC, and now an declared president, and he's sitting pretty as the president and commander-in-chief 
until the court says otherwise. He didn't say a word. He was in Lagos. He was not uh, outside the country or any other place. He was in Lagos. When the whole violence was going on, when the whole uh, profiling of people of uh, Igbo extraction in Lagos was going on, he was there. If I saw it was a selfless leader, that was when he would have said something. But he didn't say anything. As well, he only talked after the governorship election had been, had been won, as declared by INEC. In fact, this shows that our, our election, our democracy is, is going backward. Our democracy is under threat, as Peter Bradley pointed out. And you can't have a democracy that is growing where a major presidential candidate like Aswanibola Metu was on camera telling his supporters that they don't serve power a la carte. You have to grab it, you have to snatch it, you have to run with it. And that was exactly what happened in Lagos, both in the presidential election and in the governorship election. Even Anek themselves appears not to have confidence in themselves, bringing out the result they use in declaring Tinobu the winner of the election, so that he could be interrogated. Erofai was boasting on tape that has already gone viral that his fellow countrymen in Kaduna, who are Christians, will never be governor, will never be deputy governor, we will never be secretary to the state government. We will never be uh, commissioner for finance. No position of significance, significance will they ever occupy. In other words, he has turned them to slaves. Is that democracy? Is that a democracy? What we are practicing in Kaduna and for which Erofar say that they have now trans they have now moved it to the national level through Aswad Bola meeting uh, Muslim Muslim ticket. Is that a democracy? Can that can what we have now going by the assessment excuse me of Erofa is that is that democracy? Is that democracy? that people of a particular religion will never attain a particular position. And he took it to national level. He said even at the national level, the reason why they, they did Muslim Muslim ticket was to show the dominance of Islam or Muslims in Nigeria. And he said from now onwards, in the next 20 years, even in, at the national level, no Christian can ever win an election in Nigeria. And he, he, was, he was taunting Peter Obi, said we have taught him a lesson. Now that he did, we have taught him a lesson. And then he said, look at Khan. They have literally disgraced Sam, Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria. That can they talk again? Is that kind of democracy we are celebrating? Is that what democracy is all about? A democracy that closes doors for other Nigerians and say they cannot enter and put a ceiling on other Nigerians and say you can't pass through this level. Okay, yes, um, about unstable governance there, I would say that um, my take on this is it was glaring, there were issues, there were hitches during the electoral period and then the issue is still in court. In order not to, um, let me speak like um, a lawyer, in order not to jump into or not to, I think, subjudice or what do they call it, we wouldn't um, try to preempt the judges at the court of appeal. Okay, we would like to uh, leave the, the 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 ongoing petition, which has a lifespan or duration of 180 days. I think we have been like three or few months down and uh, more to go. So we would leave that um, for the judiciary, headed by the chairman, um, Justice Haruna Samani simon to 
see what verdicts have, uh, have been happening or what verdicts they will give after the long hearing of the day. Yes, talking about the judiciary, the Labour Party and uh, its council and the Independent National Electoral Commission have clashed in court. This particular clash is so hot, so deadly, and I have the details. This particular details has no video caption though or video footage, but I promised you that I would always keep you glued with um, the ongoing presidential elections petitions tribunal at the court of appeal. So the story so far, today is 14th day of June, 2023. The Labour Party and its council continued the tendering of documents in the court of appeal as regards to the presidential elections petitions tribunal ongoing today. The Labour Party tendered INEX IREV reports. IREV should mean INEX um, review portal, okay? Yes, that particular portal, its reports were tendered from the 21 local governments in Benue State, 25 local governments from Niger State, 20 local government areas from Bauchi States, including some blood IREV reports, um, which cannot be linked to any local government in Bauchi State. I have reports from local government areas, eight of them from Bielsa State, including some blurred IRF reports which couldn't be linked to any local government in Bielsa State. Now, meanwhile, the forms EC8As, B and C respectively from the states showed that election held in those areas were actually filled with um, or marred with irregularities and high level of electoral malpractices. Other documents tended before the Honorable Court were IREV reports from Gombe State um, to the three local government areas and were reports from Kaduna State and then Beavers reports and certificates of compliance from 28 states including the FCT. Now, Labour Party have drawn the attention of the court to the refusal and failure of the Independent National Electoral Commission chairman to be served with a kind of subpoena to produce certain documents in court. Now, the hope is if INEC will comply immediately as promised by their lead counsel. The case has, however, been adjourned till tomorrow, the 15th day of June 2023. That is the story so far as regards to today's um, hearing. I know some of um, our viewers may have be, or you must have watched the videos elsewhere and so on and so forth. But I tell you what, I have given you the details and these are the details from the court. And my source is Kenneth Okonkwo, a member of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council. And then he's also one of the lead councils representing the Labour Party and Peter Obi. Without wasting much of your time, I have Mike Ozokome, a senior advocate of Nigeria and one of the lead councils to the PDP who addressed the press briefly after court sessions today. Now, I have a brief cut away from that interview. So in order to buttress my points, I would let you watch this video. So you have a better imagination Yes, because there are no cameras in court. I would call it imagination, or you have a better view of what happened in court today. Stay tuned. To the IRF. And you see, with that established, we are very, very happy with uh, what has happened today. And we also tendered even screenshots from the IRF. We saw the documents tendered. So when we now uh, mentioned that uh, we had subpoenaed the INEC chairman, you can see that there are some documents we tendered and they objected to. But now we are also uh, uh, subpoenaing them to come by themselves and produce those documents. Yeah. Those documents, let them produce them themselves so that we know whether they will object or not object to the ones they will produce by themselves. Thank you very much. Right, all right, all said and done. I hope you enjoyed that brief clip there. This is the story so far. Please, if you've not been following us on the issues pertaining to the elections petitions tribunal, the presidential elections to be precise, please always follow this channel and then like it, please. And then don't forget to also tap the subscribe button, then tap the notification bell. You will be the first person or fellow to get updates if you tap that notification bell. Anytime we drop new content. Wouldn't you like to be the first to read our contents or to have access to our videos? Of course, I know you will. So uh, you would better type out, uh, tap that um, notification bell. Then finally, watch till the end. Drop a comment for us in the comment section if you feel different from anything we do here. Even if you are a supporter or you kind of drop issues or drop remarks, both positive and negative, please, you have the comment section all to yourself. Yes, um, as for that, I wouldn't say much on the ongoing petition because um, it is on course. And um, I said before, we wouldn't love to preempt. The INEC is losing it. APC is losing it, I would say. Because if you are in court, 
you would know from physical examination and analysis that um, INEC is already losing this. Okay, so unless the judiciary takes a U-turn for the negative, we wouldn't have a result that wouldn't be, or uh, let me not say, let me not preempt, okay, if that is that on that particular update, please take Little Nation's voice to her for more. During an interview with Channel's Television um, on the viral video that has Senator Bulukachua exposing his wife's benevolence to him by waving off cases in favor of his colleagues from the Senate, okay, now, um, while she was president of the Court of Appeal. Okay, now, um, the truth is, a senior advocate of Nigeria and former Attorney General of Akwa Ibom State, one Mr. Uwem Woko, has come on air to address this issue three days after the comment was made in a preliminary sitting of the Senate House. There has been no reaction from senior lawyers, neither has there been reaction from the Nigerian Bar Association, neither has, been any, has there been any reaction from the senior benchers or back benchers association, and so on. So the first um, lawyer to speak on this is Umwem Woko, and um, Umwem Woko, um, who I've already told you how high his profile is as regards to law in the country, has tackled Justice Zainab Bulkachua, though retired, who was the former president of the Court of Appeal, and who is the purported wife to Senator Bulkachua who made that exposition or expository comment for using her position to influence the decisions of her husband's friends. Moko father stated that she is a big disgrace to her family and to the Nigerian system. He further stated though that this should not be seen as a benchmark to judge the Nigerian judiciary because that is not what they truly represent. He revealed that they are committed, however, to delivering fair and transparent judgment, no matter what the case may be. Without um, much ado, let me leave you to watch uh, the cut away from the interview granted by Umwe um, Mwoko, the former Attorney General of Akwa Ibom State. Stay tuned, I'll be back with more analysis. You see, yeah, what the point I'm making is that uh, for her and for those who work with her, it's a man it's a big disgrace to her as a person it's a big disgrace to her family it's a big disgrace to what she represents but i am very cautiously putting it that we should not use this revelation as a, a, a benchmark for judging the nigerian judiciary yes her husband has come to relate it because this, this is we there were suspicions there were certain decisions that called to question the standard applied but uh, the, it, it was denied but today the shame is on her the shame is on her family the shame is on her husband who, who, who led her to compromise the integrity and the system but my caution is that we should not use it as a as a as, as a benchmark for judging the nigerian judiciary because that is not all that we represent but for her as a person for her family for her husband they are a big disgrace to the Nigerian system. That, yeah, but, but. that whatever he said about the rule of his wife as uh, the uh, president of uh, the Court of Appeal should not be taken as a judgment on the judiciary. We have in judicial officers with very high integrity. We have a judiciary that can be counted upon. We have a judiciary that is in the last of the common man. We have a judiciary that is delivering judgments and making rulings and making decisions based purely on what the law says and what it should be. She might have denied it in the past, but today her husband has come to let the cat, uh, let the cat out of the bag. This thing came up uh, 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 two days, three days ago or thereabouts. And uh, people don't just jump to issue statements, particularly people heading institutions. I'm sure senior lawyers, I'm sure the NBA, I'm sure the body of benchers, which I am a member, would begin to appraise this situation and come up with their position. But it cannot be an overnight thing. And I don't expect anybody to rush to issue statements. I don't expect anybody, any institution to rush to, 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 to draw immediate uh, standard position that should be presented. So I expect that uh, the body of benchers, the Nigerian Bar Association, other uh, civil society organizations, senior lawyers will begin to appraise this issue and make comments on them. But, but the next, the, the past three days is not enough to say, oh, why haven't yeah. they said something? Pardon me, but something is too early. I know. All right, I would say that um, Nigeria is a federating unit that is characterized and um, 
is supposed to be built on the basis of democracy, government for the people, um, with the people and by the people. But um, the truth remains that we keep on um, gracing cases that um, are pointing at any sort of democratic system, nor do they point at a stable governance, or do they point at a sort of um, comfortable democratic system or political stability, or uh, do they really show us the way to a sustainable developmental governance? This is an issue over time, and this has skyrocketed the level at which other countries um, view Nigeria as, I think, the most, if not the most corrupt country in Africa. This is not supposed to be so. Hence, the name Nigeria holds, the giant of Africa. I don't think Nigeria over time has lived to expectations as a creed or as um, affiliated to that name. So let me not um, really um, pour eulogies on Nigeria's um, or Nigeria's phrases because um, I don't think um, countries outside this uh, part of this world, um, although most countries regard Nigeria for history's sake, but um, if you pay attention to the recent occurrences in the country, you will not say outrightly that Nigeria is practicing any sort of democracy. We don't say that because in the past few uh, months we have seen a sort of dictatorship. Pronouncements have been made and decrees have been made to the pain, frustration and to the, um, to the, to the suffering of Nigerians alike. So we wouldn't call it democracy. Democracy is a sort of governance where you co-opt the people, you inculcate the citizens and they give you advice. They bring their other idea on how the country should move forward. We have not seen that, of course, in the past two regimes, and this is not supposed to be so. So, with um, Senator Bulkachua coming to expose himself and his family to that particular degree, I would say outrightly that this particular issue should be looked into. I hereby call on all security agencies, the ICPC, the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, um, the NDLEA, the Directorate of the State Security, the Nigerian Police Force, even the NSCDC to please um, watch and put eyes into this because um, um, the alleged or the purported Justice Book that you are now retired shouldn't go scot-free if these issues are found out to be through. That is that from that particular orbit and from my table and that is that from Nations Voice Tower. Please keep a date with us with the ongoing presidential elections petitions tribunal and also keep a date with us for more updates and don't forget what I told you to do. Stay tuned and see you in my next video. Bye.